Some of your comments are often quite direct. You don't mince words. If you don't like something, you say so. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because um, I feel that my first duty, really, is to the viewer who is thinking of going to see a film because I've said so, or is deciding whether he ought to go and see a film um, on what I say. And therefore, if I think, and after all, criticism comes down always to a personal view, and, and I do, I think, make it fairly clear that when I say I think a film is rotten, it is I who think it's rotten. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean it is rotten for the whole world. But I do feel that um, the, these people do deserve honesty from me, and therefore if I go to a film and it is an absolute stinker, then it's my duty, in fact, to tell everybody that I think it's a stinker. Has anyone ever complained to you? Oh, frequently, yeah. But uh, then not so much anymore. In the early days, uh, if, if I panned a film, the people in Warder Street used to regard television as a kind of publicity arm of the film business, and this, it was never my intention that my programme, this programme, should ever be that. And they got quite upset if I panned a film, and they said, well, if you're going to take this attitude, we won't let you have clips from our next film. And so I said, OK, fine. Um, in that case, I shall review the film anyway, and, uh, and I'll say that you wouldn't let me have clips, and I really couldn't quite understand why, because it wasn't that bad. <laughs> and then they would... Think, ah, oh, yes, right. So, I mean, it was it's sort of bluff and counter bluff. And eventually, grudgingly, they would let me have clips. But now I think they've come round to a much more sensible point of view, which is that even though I dislike the film intensely, I'm never going to show a boring section from it. Because if I say it's a boring film, I'll show you a boring clip. I've got a boring program, and I can hear the knobs being turned <laughs> off all over the land. So I always show the best clip I can from the film. And uh, the film company realises that, at least on television, the movie has a chance to speak for itself. People often say they don't make movies like that anymore. Do you think that that's true, that the great days have gone? No, I don't, really, because uh, although there are not so many very good movies around now, as perhaps there were in the 30s or 40s, I think that is simply because there are not so many good movies... There are not so many movies made anyway. And when people look back on, on the, the great movies of, of the 30s and the 40s, which mostly they've only seen on television, and they've only lasted on, on television because they were the pick of the bunch, there weren't actually that many of them in proportion to the number that were made. If you remember, in the 30s, middle 30s, Hollywood was turning out something like 800 feature films a year. Now, some of those, by the law of averages, had to be good. Um, and I would think that the ratio of good to bad was no better then than it is now. What about the stars themselves? Do you think they were a special breed? I think stars of any age are a special breed. I don't think the old ones were any more special than those now. I think what they had going for them that the present stars don't have was the studio build-up, mm. which did make them all seem as if they were at least 11 feet tall and there was daylight between their feet and the ground as they walked about. And the modern stars don't have that because they don't have the studios. But I think that the modern stars, like stars of any generation before them, have star quality, otherwise they wouldn't be stars. And, and that makes them special, but it doesn't make them special from one generation to another. There seemed to be a lot more charisma, didn't there, and a lot more style. Yeah, well, that was the publicity departments did all that. Um, that, that was, you know, that, that was the build-up. That the big Hollywood studios had a publicity departments which were bigger than their writing departments. The publicist was, oh, after the producer, was the most important man around the set, um, and that's why they they had all this charisma because it, it was it was built up by the publicity men. Do you think it's sad that the, the number of people going to the cinema is falling off now? I think it's, yes, it's sad. Um, I think it's inevitable, and I think it's it's going to decline even more uh, to a point where I think that by about the end of the century there won't be very many cinemas left at all. But that doesn't mean that people will be watching fewer films, because they won't. They'll be watching more films, but they'll be watching them at home. Mm. Barry, I was surprised to learn that you've written, I think, nine books altogether, some of them novels. I'm sometimes surprised <laughs> to remind myself of that, yeah. Uh, yeah, six novels... Um, the Hollywood Greats, The Movie Greats, and uh, there was a book of essays as well. You obviously enjoy writing. Well, I always regard myself as a writer uh, who happens to do most of his work um, on radio and television, but I'm a writer first and foremost, and that, that's what I'm about. Well, your latest book is another novel. It's called Have a Nice Day. What's it about? It's about a British television crew making a documentary in Hollywood about a very old actor. It's a, it's a case of waste not, want not. Because <laughs> it's um, inspired to a very large extent, obviously, by things that have, that have happened um, and ideas that have come to me over the four or five years when I've been going out regularly to Hollywood to make these series.
Is it based on people that you've you've come across and that you've actually met while you've been over there? No, it isn't really. It, obviously, there are bits and pieces of of people in it. I mean, there is an aged film star in it called called Rex Angel, who's actually one of my favourite characters. And there's a bit of George Raft in him, and there's a bit of Zeppo Marx in him, but none of them is is recognisably anybody in particular. They're mostly f- entirely really figments of my imagination. And have a nice day is a bit of a, an American expression, isn't it? They yeah, well, they, they say it to you all the time, and particularly in California. I mean, wherever you go in California, you get you get the big smile, all 64 four teeth exposed, and, and, <laughs> and, and at the end it's, have a nice day. And it doesn't... It, I mean, they may have been really bloody awful to you. You may have gone into a shop and asked for something, and the shop assistant has been rude, and you've had a great <laughs> round at the end. 64 teeth, have a nice day, and off you go. I believe you're a bit of a cricketer on the quiet as well. Oh, that's my passion, cricket. I mean, much more than films. I'm a really passionate cricketer. I, I, I do anything. I play cricket rather than go to the movies any day. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not very good, but I'm, I'm really keen. And I play for my village on Saturdays, and on Sundays in the summer I play for the Lord's Taverners, and that, that is real bliss because, um, I mean, I, it's the only way a player like me could actually get on the pitch with real cricketers, and I mean real cricketers, and the la- last game I played um, Don Wilson, the mm. old Yorkshire and England player was, was the skipper, and you know, you get people like John Snow, Colin Cowdery Richard Hutton, Fred Rumsey and, you know, and I'm playing with these guys, you know, I'm, as one of the team, and I, I played a match at the Oval this year, and I found myself in the Oval, standing out there in the centre after a wicket had fallen, discussing the state of the match with Bobby Simpson, the old yeah. Australian captain, and Ollie Milburn. And I thought, this can't be happening to me. That was great. And your village team is where? Where do you live? In Hertfordshire. It's, it's, a, it's a good village team, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it is just a village team. It's very enjoyable, too, playing there. So when we see a feature film about cricket, we can expect it to be reviewed at length. Oh, indeed, yes. I'd, I'd be inclined to devote the whole programme to it. <laughs> Barry, thanks very much indeed for coming in this afternoon. Your new book is called Have a Nice Day, published by Quartet Books at £6.50. Barry, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. I enjoyed that very much.